Lightfoot, please welcome. Corey Lightfoot! Nice to see you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, man. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. How's things? Fine. Good, good. Um, do you, getting, getting back up for shows, do you still get nervous after all these years? Sure. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Has it manifested itself? I'm, I'm, I'm nervous now. Are you from, really? From, from what we have coming up. <laughs> well, how, why, what are you nervous about? I started getting nervous uh, weeks before. Really? Da days before. Yeah, I, I, get, I get excited. Is it as the nerves, do you react to them differently now than you would have 20 years ago? Uh, no, you, uh, you deal with it and, and, and handle all of the, uh, the normal stuff in the normal world and, and get ready for the other world, which is upcoming. And does the other world really feel like you're disconnected from your regular life? There, it's kind of hard to, uh, uh, to connect the two, but uh, as a matter of fact, I've, I've made a study of it all my life in, in combining uh, family life with professional life and uh, being on the road and then family, road, back and forth. It's almost, it, it seems from the outside like it's an, almost an impossible balance to strike. Well, it has proven itself to be that, that way because it results in somewhat of a, of a roller coaster ride at, at times. Uh, it affects your, uh, your relationships, your life changes, and, uh, but the responsibility remains. And uh, uh, keeping up the responsibility, I think, is the, the main part. To whom the responsibility? To whom? The, the children. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, my kids. Yeah. Here, we talk to a lot of cats who have gone through big, solid, great careers like you have and, and continue to, and it, it's almost reversed. In the very beginning, it, they feel like the responsibility is to, is to serve the beast, the beast being the creative outlet, the song, and that's where their head is, and that's where they go. And then it's only decades later when they realize, oh, I have kids too, <laughs> that I have to be there. Did you go through that transition as well? Uh, yes, I, I, I did. It, uh, I, I've... I've been on the right path there, though, for a long time. Uh, I think since about, probably since about night, early 80s, I, I came to my senses and uh, uh, gave, up, gave up alcohol at that time. And got to, that's when I started getting involved, much more involved with my, my kids. When you go on stage now and um, you're going to play and there's going to come a part in the show when for decades you've heard your friend and your guitarist Terry play. And he's passed on now. So what's that moment? Well, we could, uh, we, we could see that it was, it was common. We, we could see it common. We, we had wonderful shows. We traveled all over the world together. And uh, we, we really miss him, and, he, and he's gone. What do you miss the most about him? Well, it, it, uh, he, he, he was a great person, and, and, and he was... Uh, he was a gentle person, and, and, and uh, I could see him slipping for the last year, and I, I made sure that, he came, that we rehearsed every, every week. Like when we were here, we would miss the odd day, but Friday you know, was rehearsal day, and I could see him watch him sliding, well, all of us, but we never said anything to him. He, he, he couldn't play anymore. He could, his, he, he, he was, his hands were shaking. He couldn't, he couldn't hold on to his flat pick anymore. And uh, it was it was sad, and uh, and finally we had to break it to him that he, that he wasn't going to be making this tour, and I sometimes almost felt instrumental about it because uh, in bringing it on because he did two days later he he took his last fall he, he had problems with vertigo mm -hmm. happening, so he was ready he was mm -hmm. ready to to rock on out. Do you um and, does that ever give you cause to reflect on your own journey and what will happen in your own life? I, I had wished that we could have both stopped drinking at the same time, but, but uh, I, I did. But 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 he couldn't. Yeah. And he had so many roller coasters in his life uh, that uh, it it just uh, you know it was just hard to hard to deal with. Him. Was it, it was not that long ago? I mean, you were on the show. We'd love to have you on. And then a little later, I, I saw online. I, was like, I heard that Gordon Lightfoot had passed, and people started texting me saying Gordon Lightfoot died. I went, no, no way. So I started looking to see if it was true, and it turns out. Thank God it wasn't true. However, I thought, what does Gordon think <laughs> when, 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 because it didn't just come and go. I mean, it was out there for a minute that you had, had passed on. How did you hear about it? Well, I was driving along in my car uh, <laughs> through uh, Mount Pleasant Cemetery. For real? Uh, I'm, uh, 
<laughs> one day, and I heard it on uh, uh, first my song, and then my obituary over the song. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, it was Charles Adler, and uh, I was on my way to my office anyway, so in about five minutes I was there, yeah. and I just got right on the phone at, at that point, except I had to go to the next door office to get to a phone because my phone was plugged uh -huh. with the incoming, and I just said, you know, this is a, this is a joke, this is a hoax, it's, it's not for real. Right. Uh, I would like to have been able to, uh, to think about what Mark Twain said about the reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Right. But <laughs> It did not come to me at that time, but I, I just got on the phone, really. And what song were they playing? Do you remember? If you could read my mind, nice. and reading a very somber, I, I might say, uh, <laughs> obituary there. Yeah. And uh, when you heard what they said, did they, what did you think? Like not the fact that you had died, but what they were saying about your life. Well, I, I, I said it. Uh, you know, this obviously is a, is a mistake, and uh, you know, I've got to get it sorted out like like right now. Right. Can you imagine the producer who had just told the, uh, Charles Adler, listen, Gordon Lightfoot's dead. The phone rings. Weirdly enough, sir, it's Gordon Lightfoot on the phone. <laughs> what well, a crazy I, moment that would be. I, I got him on the phone. You got I, Charles on the phone? I, I got him, I got Charles on the phone right, right away. <laughs> did he Did he think that he was talking to somebody in heaven? No. <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was very quickly sorted out. Where was it? Well, it was on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, well, how did it get there? And I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know how does anybody know? And uh, so it, it was an interesting day. I mean, uh, they don't, really, it was only my... my uh, my eldest daughter uh, got quite emotional about it that evening. Well, that's though. what I was I mean, thinking, she was right? Very upset about it. Because she would have heard about it before she yeah. would have heard from you. So, what, what yeah. was that like? Well, I mean, I, I was I was I was on the phone with her for you know 20, 25 minutes. She's kind of an emotional girl, you know. I love her, and she she was really upset at it. it the others, uh, another one of my kids was on, coming on the train from Halifax when he when he heard about it, and he said, "Oh, I know this is not true." And uh, he, he was right. The, um, the question I would have then is, if you were going to be eulogized on the radio and the song they played was If You Could Read My Mind, was that the song you would have selected? Uh, I, I think I would have got, got into something like, uh, like Rainy Day People or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. No, it was, it was a good choice. It, it's, uh, I, I think, for, for a eulogy. I, I think it was very nice. Very nice <laughs> indeed, you know. But uh, I, I was go going through uh, uh, actually something quite serious at that time. It was the demise of a, of a, of a marriage, really, at that time. And uh, it sort of found its way into a, uh, to a song, which a lot of times things do. You know, uh, uh, I heard Neil say, you know, you look inside yourself uh, when you're songwriting. Uh, Neil Young says that, and it's actually quite true. You've got to look inside to get the ideas, like what, what's, find out what's happening in, in your own soul, almost. It's, it's, it's so very nebulous. I mean, I've, I've got 220 songs on record, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how it, uh, what I think back on really how I did it, uh, I was all done. And uh, I, I actually completed, uh, well, any record contract I ever had, I, I completed, and uh, I was under contract with record companies for 33 years. Yorkville back in the day, what was that like? It was, it, it was, uh, it was really, really interesting. Nobody knew that, that we were at uh, on the ground level with something that was going to turn into. And Yorkville's a neighborhood in Toronto, which is now legendary. Yeah, it's a very now very fancy. It's where you know it's it's where most people don't get to go. It's a really fancy neighborhood. But at the time, you were there. Neil Young was there. Joni was like the kids. Were, they were kids too, right? Everybody was there. Everybody that you can think of that was there, and even the ones who still are lasting today, were all there. Like, uh, who was one where you saw them and went, "That they're going to be somebody"? Well, well, uh, Bernie Feeder will tell you. At Riverboat. He like he had people. James Taylor, uh, Joni Mitchell. Like here they are. They were there. Nobody knew who they were. What was Joni like as a, as a teenager? Young kid. She, she was very kind. She she actually turned me on to the Beatles first time. I I wouldn't have anything to do with them. I felt it like they were cutting my time for the first three. <laughs> I, every time I every time I would have an album, there'd be another Beatles another Beatles album there to, to beat us down. Stick around. A lot of people have covered a Gordon Lightfoot song. Everybody from Elvis to Barbra Streisand. We'll find out if he's got a favorite version. Anthropology with Gordon Lightfoot when we come back. <laughs> Gordon Lightfoot, um, answer apology. 
Um, you were on Johnny Cash's show when he had a TV show, right? What was that like? What was John like? He was a great guy. We got to do a duet. It's one of the few duets I ever did. I, I didn't see him very much. I, I met him a couple of times. He recorded a couple of my tunes. I, I talked to him around the show that I did. Do you have a favorite cover of your songs where someone did your song? I, you know, I, I gotta, I, I could, I could uh, mention the first, my, my first choice would be <clears throat> Ian and Sylvia doing Early Morning Rain. Yeah. Uh, but then if I want to get re really realistic about it in terms of uh, later on, far down the line, I'd look back, Elvis doing Early Morning Rain, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Early Morning Rain, or Barbara Streisand, if you could read my mind. When Elvis covers one of your songs, what does that mean for your career? It, it's a, it, it gives me a, a talking point for, for every show that I do. It gives me a little talking point and there's two or three different things that I can talk about and it's all humorous. It's all nice lighthearted stuff. Nice. Who's, who's had a bigger influence on your music? Would it be Bob Dylan, Pete Seeger or Woody Guthrie? Uh, Bob, Bob Dylan, Pete Seeger. Yeah. Woody Guthrie I didn't, I, I didn't know that, that well but Pete Seeger, Bob Dylan. You're a Leafs fan uh, but can you cheer for the Canucks now in the playoffs? Y yes I can. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I can. After, after Leafs, I'm a, I'm, you know, a Leaf fan right, right from in my soul. Yes, I can. Right, that's I, I could record, I, I, it could either be, a, I, I would uh, root for the Canadian team. So if it were the Canadians or uh, Vancouver, I, I would nice. root for either one. But now it's just Vancouver, so they're my. There you go. We all know the Prime Minister loves music. Would you ever do a duet with Stephen Harper? Probably not. No. <laughs> if you can get me, I, I, you know, it's 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 an interesting thought, and probably, probably I, I could. Yeah. Probably we could. It would be a matter of, of setting the whole thing up and booking yeah. the studio and getting all of. Would you look at that guy on TV and say that guy's got a song in him that just needs to get out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd have to get him in there. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon is uh, touring until the end of the month. We've got all the dates uh, for his shows on our website. Go, go to our website, strombo.com, and you can find out when you can see the legend live for sure. Gordon Lightfoot, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.